I'm not an iPad kid, I'm an iPad man. Look at these things, iPad. Let's play a game called Who Gives a Shit Anymore? It's gonna be a quick game because I can't find anybody. I have a funny little relationship with iPads. And I shouldn't have said that because I am pretty sure there are going to be no jokes in this story. iPads and tablets throughout their lives uh, have always kind of gone up and down in terms of their usefulness, if I really think they're warranted. I remember when the iPad was first announced in like early 2010, and I remember not getting it. What the hell is the point of that? It was literally just a larger iPod Touch uh, for $500. Apple posed the question, what is between a smartphone and a laptop? And uh, if that thing between them would be warranted, like is there a reason to own all three? And sometimes, sure. Uh, that time, iPad 1, hell no. Uh, there was no camera on it, it was 16 gigabytes. I mean like what? You're just gonna browse the web on that thing, check email, I mean, for that, yeah, sure, it works, it does the job, and the touchscreen display does make it a little more fun. But if you're already spending $500 on this thing, I feel like it, it would probably be worth it to just save up a little more and, and get a laptop. Uh, because when you actually try to start using your iPad as a computer, uh, yeah, the, the limitations start to show. But that was just with the iPad 1. I didn't see much point of that thing back in the day. But when the iPad 2 got announced with cameras and smart covers, that's when I was like, oh boy. I think the main thing that kind of got me into it was the fact that iMovie was announced for iPad. Uh, just, just the idea that you could edit video uh, on something like this. I, I just instantly pictured being in the backseat of a car, uh, just editing video on this very thin uh, tablet. Uh, that, that was really cool, and I think that kind of showed me a bit of like, why the iPad deserves to exist. Because yeah, you can do all the things an iPad can do on an iPhone, but God damn, you don't want to do it on a screen that small. So you take the ease of use of an iPhone and, uh, um, make it easy to use. So I was on board with iPad 2. My mom got one for her birthday, so uh, I kind of mooched off of her iPad 2. And uh, yeah, it was, yeah, that was a lovely little device. I had a lot of fun on that thing. Eventually I got my very own iPad, an iPad mini first generation, which I later sold to afford Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Tough times. Now I really liked using that one too, but man, I mean, uh, eventually it just kind of, you just kind of had to ask, like, what, what are we doing here? Smartphones were getting bigger, tablets were getting smaller, and, and just, like, things were starting to bleed together a little too much to the point that, for a bit there, kind of felt like, you know, when, when you have, like, a six-inch screen iPhone, why, what's the point of an iPad mini? Now, laptops were becoming faster and thinner, smartphones were becoming more capable with bigger screens, uh, iPads started to feel weird, but eventually, you know, they brought in the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil and USB-C port, and, uh, yeah, then it started to feel pretty good again. Uh, and, and now it feels weird because now they have, like, Final Cut Pro for iPad, uh, and it feels like they introduced that just to say, like, uh, please God, consider the iPad a computer. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the Final Cut Pro on the iPad is... Is a weird little bugger. I tried using it for 20 minutes and I realized this is a total gimmick. I will never actually use this, but it's cool that it exists. My apologies for rambling, but my point is here, me and the iPad go way back. How far back? Well, I recognize this. This is an iPad owner's equivalent to a purple heart. Okay, so I recognize this thing, but I've never owned one until now. And I am so happy to do so because this is such an obscure little bugger right here. This is the iCade. Now, what's the iCade? I don't know. I have a lot of nostalgia for the uh, 2008 to uh, 20... 13, 2014 era of mobile games. Like, I have a couple games on my phone, but they're all the same. Uh, they all kind of have a very similar gameplay loop of like, maybe it's like oddly satisfying for, for like a couple days, 
and then you get burnt out on it because it's just the same damn thing over and over and over again. Uh, stuff like Monopoly Go. I see this damn mobile game ad like every single time an ad comes up of this stupid ass king and he's about to get it. I just know it's just gonna be the same thing for hours on end and it's just there's gonna be a bunch of pop-up ads and all this garbage. And I look back at mobile games from back in the day and like yeah sure there was a lot of really shallow stuff on there. Uh, pretty much 60% of the iPhone app store uh, were fart apps. And I'm not gonna act like this was a perfect era, you know? Even during the greatest renaissances throughout history, I mean, there were still a couple cases of leprosy. I mean, a lot of these mobile games kind of got thrown under the bus back then uh, in a similar way that mobile games do uh, nowadays which is uh, very unfair, you know? You look back at stuff like Cut the Rope and like Angry Birds, and uh, yeah, you know, like, oh man, Scott's gonna praise Angry Birds. Like, yeah, I, I don't really give a damn about Angry Birds, but like, you have to admit, like, there's actual goddamn game design going on there. Like, it's an actual video game. There's actual things going on there. Whereas like, mobile games these days, like, <laughs> They all pretty much play themselves. But as good as some of these old school mobile games were, uh, what really attracted me back then, uh, th that I, I got fooled by every single time, were all the actual video games available on the App Store. Like, I remember seeing, you know, you had Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Mega Man 2, Street Fighter 4, Resident Evil 4. These were like actual video games and they all said like, oh yeah, yeah, it'll work on the iPhone. Here's the iPhone version of, of this game. And I always bought them. I bought every single one of those damn games and like played them for a little bit on the iPod, my iPod Touch and never played them again. I mean, in a couple cases, I actually played through uh, a couple of these games a fair amount. I remember actually getting like really far in the iPhone version of Mega Man 2. Uh, th this version got like 2 out of 10 on IGN at the time. Uh, it, it was not a great controlling version, and it was all because of the touchscreen controls. Which is why I respect the hell out of this era of like traditional mobile games, uh, like Cut the Rope, because like a lot of these were designed fully with touchscreens in mind. Like they took full advantage of the hardware. Uh, whereas Resident Evil 4 on the iPhone, that took advantage of me. Most of these traditional video games ported to the iPhone suffered from the dreaded touchscreen D-pad and buttons. If only there was an audio company that came to the rescue and made an arcade device for the iPad. Yes, Ion! They make record players, and uh, they decided to come up with an April Fool's Day joke about the iCade, an iPad arcade setup. Uh, and then people seem to like it enough that they uh, eventually turned it into its own thing, like a year later. Uh, that's like one of the worst April Fool's Day jokes of all time. When it's like something people actually wanted and people are like, that's a great idea. And then they're like, oh shit, we should actually make that now. I mean like, yeah, they're actually pretty good April Fool's Day jokes at the end of the day if it, you know, actually came up with something cool. Uh, but, uh, but as a joke, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty dog. Boom, here it is. So this came out during like the iPad 2, iPad 3 era. And they're advertising this alongside Atari Greatest Hits on the App Store. I remember this app. Uh, I was actually very interested in this back in the day because this was a free app and it came with Missile Command preloaded on it, but for the other hundreds of Atari games, uh, you'd have to pay uh, either for them like within packs for like a buck or two, uh, or you just get them all for $10. And I very much considered this. I remember scrounging up change uh, to give to my parents whenever I wanted to buy uh, an app or like an iTunes TV show episode or a movie or anything. Uh, so I was like trying to find like all this loose change that I could then give to them in exchange to, uh, you know, to buy something with their credit card on, on the app store. I really considered it with Atari Greatest Hits. I mean, like, hundreds of games. Hundreds of classic games. I like classic games. I'm pretty happy I didn't do that because I did that recently to test this out. Sometimes I just forget Atari games are Atari games. Of course, Atari games have their place in history, but, you know, like, actually playing them these days what do you want me to say? And keep in mind, I like this kind of garbage, but even I have my limits. Atari Golf? <laughs> Fuck off. Definitely interesting how they cross-promoted this app 
uh, with the iCade, considering that the iCade has a very traditional six buttons, like a fighting game layout, and a, a pretty standard arcade joystick. Uh, because uh, a, a lot of the Atari arcade games here uh, don't use a standard joystick and standard arcade buttons. A lot of these are games that use like a spinner or something like that. And a lot of these are trackball games. And then you move over to the Atari 2600 games and like, man, an arcade joystick ain't really gonna do much to make these better. It's still really cool to be able to play these classic games uh, with traditional arcade style controls uh, and the fact that you can still do it is incredible i was still able to download this app on a modern ipad like this ipad's only like two years old or so yeah i was still able to buy the ten dollar game pack uh i'm not sure if it's actively available on the app store or if i was just still able to access it because i downloaded it back in the day so it was still like on my account i could re-download it but still Everything just works so smoothly there, which I can say about other games that support the iCade. Yeah, so not a lot of games officially supported the iCade, but it's just a Bluetooth controller, so it should work. But uh, yeah, I, I have some difficulty getting it to work in games like, uh, you know, the Sonic mobile ports here. Temple Run of all games supports the iCade. At least the left and right buttons. Yeah, for some reason, uh, down doesn't work in Temper Run here, uh, which is weird because down works in other games I've tested with the iCade. And for some reason, the iCade only works in Temper Run Plus on Apple Arcade. Uh, tr regular old Temper Run here, uh, it, do it doesn't work in, it doesn't work in, which is strange. I I'd assume the original version of Temper Run, which is what that is, uh, would support the iCade since, you know, it, it's older, with Temple Run Plus being, like, the, the premium original Temple Run available on the Apple Arcade subscription service. I'd assume, like, it wouldn't work in that, because it's a newer version of Temple Run. I don't know. Uh, you know what's a real great one? Miss Pac-Man. Uh, Miss Pac-Man works with the iCade, uh, which is, like, yeah, that that's obviously, like, one that's, like, oh, yeah, but of course I don't think the original like iPad iPhone version of Miss Pac-Man is available on the App Store anymore I was able to download it because you know I had it downloaded from back in the day if you want regular Pac-Man I don't know what's going on here. You know the the, the uh, Version of Pac-Man they have on the App Store right now like they mobile fight it Like you just have these weird ass little challenge rooms and stuff You, you know you want to go through all the challenges every day and everything like, what, what the hell is going on here? Ain't no one's even worse. No iCade support. You know what's strange? Uh, we're actually gonna be a two for two in terms of uh, Apple Arcade games that support the iCade. Here we have uh, Frogger in Toy Town. And yeah, you know, this works with the iCade. I'm controlling it right now with the iCade. This, <laughs> this iPad controller from 2011 still works in some games, which is pretty crazy. To be fair, you know, it is just a Bluetooth controller. Uh, but the fact that it's a little spotty in some games and, and works flawlessly with others is it, it, it's pretty crazy to me. Man, I've always just found this thing really, really cool. This is probably like one of the coolest possible accessories created for an iPad. And they created it like within the first year or two of the iPad's existence. I just think this thing nails what it sets out to do. Uh, of course, like it, its compatibility is a bit spotty, uh, at least with how, what I've tried it with. However, there's one app that does work with it that makes it all worth it. There's this Vectrex ass app that plays Vectrex games. Do you know the Vectrex? Yeah, here's footage of my Vectrex and here's footage of the iPad and the iCade playing Vectrex games. Now the Vectrex is very unique. It's, it, it's a very cool old ass game system uh, that uses vector graphics. And there's nothing really else like it. Like the the graphics are so smooth, like it it it's unreal. It, it just looks cool in person, and uh, it's it's really fun to play. You know, like really fun. Uh, yeah, Scott, tell me more. Listen, man, I'm not telling you to put your beer down to play a Vectrex, but what I'm trying to say is, uh, as far as games from this era, you know, early '80s. Uh, the Vectrex is very special. It's a very cool thing that I think most people, if you turn one on, can really appreciate. Uh, mainly because, you know, it's a 
it's a game console with a built-in screen. You can immediately turn on. It, it turns on instantly, and you're just in there playing a very unique kind of retro game. Uh, you know, with, with very cool vector graphics. And, uh, you know, they're very simple games, but, you know, they're instantly understandable. You can instantly just pop in, you know, move around, play, have some fun. Uh, it, it's cool. It's very cool. But uh, Vectrex games haven't really ever been re-released outside of this damn iPad app that works flawlessly with the iCade and turns your iPad into, like, the, the best recreation of a Vectrex I've ever seen in my damn life. I've only seen one recreation of a Vectrex, and it's this, but still, it's really cool. Unfortunately, this app is, like, a subscription-based thing, and I'm pretty sure I forgot to unsubscribe, uh... I'm not playing this thing more than once, but still pretty damn cool. And so is the IK, just based on like the fact that it, it does very much make your iPad feel like a mini arcade cabinet. Of course, these days, I don't really think it has much use at all. I feel like you're much better off uh, getting like like a mini, an actual mini arcade cabinet, uh, like a multi k like tabletop looking thing. I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like you're going to get all the games you want on that. Whereas with this, uh, you're kind of stuck with the table scraps from 10 years ago. Like, what, whatever still will work with the iCade. Uh, you know, new games still might support it. They might not. I don't know. But this just brings me back to uh, kind of a fun era where it felt like like these devices were, were capable of everything. They could replace everything in your life. The iPad can replace any arcade cabinet. Watch it. And, uh, you know, overall, I'm happy that uh, they, they didn't end up doing that. I think we've kind of come back to an era where we realized like, hey, let's not let our phone do absolutely everything. It, it's nice to have like a camera uh, separate from our phone. It's nice to collect vinyl uh, and not rely on our phone for absolutely everything or, or whatever, you know. Um, but back then, uh, these devices genuinely felt magical, like like they could do literally anything. And it felt like, you know, like I... It, I, I don't really remember a time where I've, I've felt that sense. You know, it felt like we were truly stepping into the future uh, with, with you know, these these devices. And, uh, you know, things like the IK really did show that they were, they were jacks of all trades. They could do anything! And honestly, I'm pretty bummed out that, uh, you know, they're still not making uh, stuff like this. Of course, there's Bluetooth controllers all over the place. Oh, but would you look at that? That looks familiar, huh? <laughs> the iCade did it first. And yeah, they had a couple of spin-off products for the iCade brand. This is the iCade Mobile, so, uh, you know, this would work with, uh, you know, iPhone, iPod Touch at the time. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a Bluetooth controller. Uh, I don't really think this will fit these days. Phones have gotten awfully bigger, but, uh, yeah, you know? This is a Bluetooth controller for your iPhone. And it's not necessarily that great. <laughs> like, it, it's fine. Uh, all the buttons feel tolerable. Uh, I, I, this is probably better than nothing. Uh, but honestly, I would take nothing over this because I am not lugging this in my slacks. There's also the iCade Core. Uh, which is pretty much just a slimmed down version of the iCade. Yeah, I gotta be honest, this is miserable. Isn't that the point of the iCade to do this funny little thing? Look, it's an arcade machine. If I tell you this is an arcade machine, you're gonna respond with, is everything all right? I mean, something like this would definitely be cheaper and uh, you know, it definitely takes up less room. So I think it has its place. But overall, I'm still all about the original iCade arcade style dock for your iPad. Uh, I love this thing. I'm never gonna use it again, but I love this thing. Again, like I said, it kind of brings me back to like that 2011 nostalgia, which makes me sound like the youngest little twerp of all time, just saying I'm nostalgic for 2011. Like, motherfucker, that was nearly 15 years ago. Let me be. Like, I remember seeing reviews for this thing, seeing this thing online and thinking like, damn, that, that would be so cool to own. And, uh, you know, I, I had the iPad and that, that was really great. So, uh, you know, it all kind of comes together and it's just, it's, it's such a cool thing they did back then that still works. Like you can use this very effectively with uh, standard sized modern iPads. The fact is this doesn't have like an old ass iPad dock connector in here. Like it, it, it's pretty future proof. There's like a hole here where you can fit 
a charger to charge your iPad while you're playing. Uh, but, uh, the, the fact is, like, they didn't, they could have put, like, the actual dock connector in there. Completely made it obsolete once Apple changed their dock connector twice. But no, this thing still works to this day. And I'm so happy I finally own something nobody else gives a shit about. Crazy it took me this long.